going to do a little recap of the IDEO design challenge uh, that, that Nick and I really co-lead uh, because uh, he's, he's been elevated to a, uh, a coach and a, 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 an organizer now, so it's just marvelous to see that. But this is the third year we've done it. There are 25 uh, attendees, hopefully many of you are here, and five e-patients. And uh, we spend the whole day working on a, a problem that one of the, each one of the e-patients brings to the table. And um, let's see, a few, just a little reminder of what design thinking is. And one thing, it's been very gratifying. Every three or four presentations mentions design thinking. So this seems to have permeated the DNA of this conference, which is awesome to see. And uh, these graduates are off doing their own programs like Nick and uh, Ma uh, Mark Katz and Dr. Joyce Lee and, and uh, uh, Kirsten and so on. So uh, design thinking, this balancing act with biz people, business, and technical factors, but people factors count more. Uh, you're, you're trying to get at what people are thinking and feeling by listening to what they're saying, but especially watching what they're doing. And this process, these three main buckets of inspire, ideate, and implement uh, are what we practice in a, a one-day setting, although each of these buckets can take a month, two months, three months, and even beyond. So uh, uh, instead of two months, they t each of these buckets takes two hours in our day. Um, and uh, we'll just go from there. This is a bit of an eye chart, but uh, that's, the, that's the whole day, starting with uh, how might we from each patient and ending with a, um, a presentation. So it, it, This really has become, design thinking has become the methodology by which the the thought power that comes together at MedX is, is implementing the, the ideas that come out of this. It's really neat to kind of see it become a, um, it's, it's, it's an epidemic in a good way. Yeah. Right? So I want to uh, bring up to our stage now the five E patients who were at the center of this year's design challenges. So help me uh, please welcome Alan Brewington. <laughs> From behind, Lisa Bernstein. D. Doug Cantor, Annette. Here they come. Lisa, why don't you join me? We're a, a seat short, so we'll share. Does that work? That works. Well, welcome. So we wanted to start by um, trying to give everybody a sense of the day. And, and one of the fundamental tenets of design thinking uh, is starting with a very open-ended challenge, a, a question that we ask, how might we? Which implies, first of all, that it can be done. Second of all, that it's a we effort. Uh, and then third, what do we need to do to do it? And so each of the e-patients work together with designers and a team. You'll see some of these pictures kind of rotate here behind us. And what I'd like to maybe do is start with Lisa and have you just go down the line and, and tell us your how might we statement that your group worked on. Okay, I'll just read it to you. It came out of a situation that I experienced in an ER. And my statement is, how might we improve communication between complex patients and providers during crisis moments outside of their normal care context? Fantastic. Uh, mine was, how might we get doctors to include quality of life discussions with chronic patients on an ongoing basis? But it turned into because I'm going through possible total hip replacement surgery. So it turned into how can we get that quality of life discussions, why I deal with the multiple doctors and surgeons and possibly a two, two states uh, for my particular problem. I came with a lot of different ideas of how might we do things for cancer patients. And I ended up being able with my team to incorporate a lot of those how might we's into one very large one, encompassing one, how might we help cancer survivors understand what to expect after treatment, including finding information from doctors, support from other patients, and support in terms of cognitive issues and deficiencies they might experience. My statement was, how might we convey new symptoms to doctors and be believed? I find that when symptoms don't fit the mold, it's back to the same round of doctors for the same verdicts and no progress. And my group focused on my diabetes and our how might we might was uh, how might we use data to help humanize clinic visits. Annette, you um, brought some props with you. 
I we do. need to have a little show and tell here. Tell us about the, the cards. There's one in particular I'm hoping you're going to flash for us and, uh, and hold well, up. We ended up making very simple prototypes of tools that a patient could use. And one of them was signs. So that if you're sitting there in your visit and the doctor is uh, not acknowledging the fact that you're in pain, you, you can just hold this up in mid-sentence and... And, and the next one, doctor, you're going too fast. Mm -hmm. That happens so often. And then the perennial, I'm worried about side effects. And will this affect my sex life? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then we end up with, doctor, you did it right, or else you didn't do it right. <laughs> kind of the, the Roman gladiator version, right? Do you pass or yeah. fail, huh? One of, the, one of the neatest things that comes out of uh, this every year is that the, the ideas turn into these skits and, and prototypes, but they're things like your, your cards here are not very far from being real. You could take that to a, a doctor's office today. <laughs> Lisa, you guys went through uh, really a whole process that you came up with, not just a thing, but a whole process. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Well, it was really incredible to experience the design thinking workshop around something like this because it reminds you, and I've made some notes about it, that you know I'm a perfectionist and so many of us are, and that perfection really is the enemy of good. And in trying to come up with this, you know, prototype really quickly, you're able to, you know, jump in and focus in and try and get down to the nitty gritty. And you realize just get it done so that you can by by enacting the prototype, by doing the skit, you then start to realize, ah, we could tweak this, we could tweak that. And so for instance, um, I ended up role playing a doctor. It was really amazing to put on scrubs and a um, stethoscope, and there was this funny blue wig, so we called me Dr. Blue, and when I said hello to the patient who was playing me, but who was actually a doctor, I said, hello, I'm Dr. Blue. And then afterwards, I thought about it, and the, one of the doctors who had the biggest impacts on my life said to me, don't call me doctor, call me Philomena. And so it reminded me of, you know, the fact that we bring... Um, well, what's it called, you know, cultural uh, reflexes with us, and by actually getting down to business right away and enacting something, you can point those out and find them and, and, and tweak instantly. If only we had a second day, right, yeah. um, to, to take it further. Come on. Dee, talk to us about, um, about your piece. It went from kind of process, and it included an app and technology. You guys built like a whole ecosystem. We did. We had, we had multiple parts to our final uh, prototype. We started out with what would happen in a doctor's office, so we had a, a, a tiny little box that patients could leave tips for other patients, and patients could ask questions of other patients or their doctor. And those um, items were then answered and placed on a giant bulletin board in the doctor's office, so as patients came in over time, they could read the concerns and questions other patients had. When our, our biggest problem, or my biggest problem when I was a cancer patient was when they decided at, I finished treatment and they didn't have to, I didn't have to be seen for a month. And I was like, oh my God, no, really? Um, and what we did was develop a care box that included some fun things. We had a bracelet that said, no fear. We had a temporary tattoo that said, I'm now under control. And a newsletter that went through the first month after treatment and gave tips and inspiration to the patient. And that would progress on and get mailed to the patient every month after they finished treatment. And then if they chose to, they could then enroll and use an online app that would do the same thing, day 102. Here's how you may feel. And if you have questions or concerns, you could also list your symptoms um, and questions, and that could get sent to your physician. So you might not have seen them for three months, but they could still answer your questions. Alan, when I, um, I, I know you a little bit outside of the event as well, so when I think of you, you have this kind of just do it attitude to the world. So one of the, the tenets here, right, is that these things kind of get built and come to life and it becomes a, a just do it. Um, could you speak a little bit to, to that idea? Is this something that could be um, a little bit of a leading question, I suppose, but, but um, could these things become real and could this be a, a way of um, working that outside of yesterday's event? I think it, I mean, it really much could become real. Uh, 
I kept thinking about the last two days when that, you know, kind of anticipating this question. You know, in previous life, I was a ski instructor, and and even as a ski instructor, and I had, had days where you know I couldn't put my boots on straight, or my class would you know just be hating life, which I was that morning because I woke up with such a bad headache. You know, I thought I was in a lot of trouble there, but you know when you go through this process, it, I mean it, it's like that first time I get that smile from a student that makes their first turn, and you get that energy, and it just, I mean it's more powerful. It could. Uh, probably f feel a dentist's imagination there. It's, I mean, it's, it was incredible. And so by the end of this day, I'm, I mean, I'm so pumped up that despite this headache that I wanted to take on healthcare. And I think our group was, you know, fed off that energy together. And Dennis had to come over a couple different times and say, hey, leave some for the rest of us. Because, uh, you know, we were working towards that, you know, we kind of were working towards that and got off, maybe a little off track on focusing on me and trying to attack that healthcare problem. And that really made it to, okay, let's get to work. You know, it made it so easy to do. Um, I mean, it was just incredible how easy it was to get down to work and try to explore these ideas. Well, hold on to that thought because I, I and don't put the mic down. I want to come back to you for a second. I want to point out a housekeeping note too. In a few minutes, um, we're going to hear from Doug in detail. Doug, I'm not ignoring you. I, I promise. Um, Doug's going to actually pitch his his new beta here to us. Um, but but you, Alan, your point about it being easy. Um, at the end, you stood stood up and had a very kind of passionate discussion about. You said this is something I need. This is something and. Somebody told you um, that they weren't sure it could come to fruition for any number of reasons, and you handled that very gracefully. But I'm, I want to I want to know how that um, yeah, there's kind of a balance there, right? Of luckily that was shock, not grace, but because uh, I didn't really know. I wasn't you know anticipating that. I didn't know what to say. But as a group, we came up to the conclusion that we wanted that humor, you know, that infomercial humor. But in reality, this is my life. You know, I'm facing for a total hip replacement, which is fairly common and fairly easy. I have three doctors right now, and because of my age, I might be going to a different state to explore kind of a relatively new, you know, new procedure for the hip. Well, that's a lot of confusion, that's a lot of questions, that's a lot of stress. Uh, you know, so our dashboard you know, idea took, went in there and took my quality of life to try to help me get back to getting so I can ski in six months. So I can go out and you know practice, you know, you just said that just do it attitude. I don't want to lose that. I think that's part of what makes me me. So I thought that was the end result. That's what the dashboard did. It helped me remain me and not let the, the pain or the stress or just the whole surgery experience take over my life. Yeah, it's interesting. You go through that process for the day and you become kind of emotionally invested and you have a clarity. So at that point your mission is oh, undeterred, my huh? My team made me, that's the hardest I've worked in quite a few years. I hope my boss isn't listening, but uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, but it was so productive and I mean, it was so, I mean, I guess productive is the only word I can think of it that I didn't really feel it until, I, until the end, until I laid down in the room spinning going, what just happened? You know, it was, I worked fairly, I worked really hard. And thanks to my teammates too, because they, I mean, that, the whole group dynamic thing and the way the process works and the question, that, I mean, I had, most of the credit has to go with them because they worked with me, they stayed with me, they asked questions that kind of gave me that energy to keep on going despite my physical problems at the time. Great, Lisa, did you wanna jump in? Just a small thing to jump in uh, about the group dynamic and the power of this process and the power of having us e-patients as the focal point. What I found, my team was composed, I think, if not primarily of physicians, maybe 90% of physicians. And I saw uh, the patient becoming the mirror um, for the physician's humanity and a reminder to them, you know, and this is a concept we've been talking about a lot this weekend, which is empathy. Um, and and getting back in touch with your own humanity. So that was something incredibly powerful that came out um, of, of our group. One of the, uh, the, the parts of this process relies so heavily on the empathy piece and the humanity. And, and Doug, we got a chance to work together. We were on the same group. And, and I think at one point we said to you, get ready because we're gonna pepper you with questions for about an hour. And, and you, um, you handled that really well, but I'm curious what that, that was like for you. Well, I, I guess I'm pretty used to um, 
<coughs> fielding a lot of those questions that you brought up. I mean, I've already been publishing all my data publicly and blogging about it. So mm -hmm. I was totally fine with it, actually. Um, but it was nice that uh, you guys kept getting back to the data side, in part because I've focused so much of my own work with diabetes on data. But I actually was hoping to spend a lot of the, the IDEO design challenge talking about the other pieces of the puzzle, which is what we ended up doing. And it was a, it was a nice balance. One, one, I, one thing I, I just want to build on this, I saw this, it's not a role reversal, but it's sort of a role equalization. And, and the, the, with, there's three or four physician, physicians on, either, on each team, and there, there, there was a, quite, a, quite a process. I've seen this happening each year, and this year was even more distinct. And uh, maybe, maybe some of you could men speak to that. I found it really interesting. My team was a mix of designers and, and physicians. And I'm very used to telling my story. I've been telling it a lot for the last couple of years. But they asked me questions that I had never, ever been asked before. And they asked me how I felt. How did you feel when that happened? How did you feel? How did your husband feel? How did your children feel? So they could really understand who we were designing for, the type of patient they were designing for. And that, uh, you know, I'm, I, I guess that's really as patient-centered as you can get. Wow. And I appreciate the fact that they did ask those questions. Can I add, just briefly, also the same thing, and my story was based on a, on a really traumatic event. And we patients work really hard in that session, but so, do, so does everyone else. It's so intense, like Dennis was saying earlier. Two months for each thing is two hours for, during the day. Um, and it just brought up so many things to be asked these questions and looked in the eye and wanting, wanted, I mean, the, everyone wanted to understand what I had gone through so that we could fix this for other people. Very powerful. And, and, Annette, you're smiling and nodding, and I want to oh, tease I'm, out of you what, the, uh, what your experience was like. Well, at the end of the day, I was really impressed with what the team produced, like four tools for the toolbox. And, and I was just floating along thinking, man, these people are smart. And then after sitting in MedEx the next day and listening to the speakers, I realized that the whole thing was based on what they pulled out of me. So the patient voice, working with the clinicians and the designer and even a venture capitalist, was really powerful. And even though I advocate strongly for the patient voice on an ongoing basis, um, I hadn't realized how big a difference it could make. Um. One of the things we'd like to do now is ask, I think Jayan and Tanya are in the audience, so two of the uh, IDEO coaches. We'd like to ask them to maybe step up to the mic and just share a few examples. And while you were coming to the mic, Lisa and Dennis, this year you two worked together ahead of the, the event, uh, and we changed things a little bit. You, you asked folks to work on their how might we question ahead of time, and I wonder if you could talk just a little bit about the design of the design challenge. Well, the design of the design challenge, what we ended up doing was, um, first of all, thinking, okay, there are going to be five of us e-patients, why don't we get to know each other a little bit and do a few Google Hangouts and then do that as well with Dennis? Because my thinking was, we're going in, we're the five people, there are going to be a whole bunch of people we've never met before, all sorts of you know professional people, physicians and what have you. Um, how might we feel coming in as sort of loners, but as the focal point of this? So I thought maybe if we could you know, applying that whole <laughs> community thing, maybe just build community amongst ourselves, get to know Dennis a bit, and sort of, um, what's the word, demystify the process. Um, yeah, that was that's a, how that we started. That was a marvelous thing. In fact, I've asked Lisa to come and do this again next year to help organize, because we had never, well, it's only one-on-one. -on -one. Tanya and I had been working one-on-one -on -one to build a How Might We, and this was 100% better, so. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hear from... Uh, either Tanya or Giant, uh, who are, who are um, uh, uh, coaches. Hi, my name is Giant Menon. Uh, it's my third month at IDEO. I'm a neurosurgeon here at Stanford and uh, taking a career change and working on the problem from outside of the system. And I, I truly appreciated the opportunity to work with UD and, and really see the, uh, see the whole process and miniaturize what I do every day at IDEO. But uh, what really, what really was powerful was what you what you'd said before. Having having you really be the the focal point and the litmus test every time for all the questions, the ideas, the inspirations, the brainstorming, and then finally the 
the product envisioning that you that you guys came up with completely on your own was uh, really inspiring and very grounding. And I think part of perhaps what medical education should be after uh, you know after training. You know, I've I've done all the tests, done all the uh, you know stuff. There check boxes there there have to be, but uh, it's very easy to then just go straight into practice mode and just just do it rote. But even having a patient outside my own clinical sphere, you know, w w with what you went through, with your, your with your cancer and remission, the part of the the journey that we don't really get to see the after discharge, uh, post treatment phase was really eye opening for me and and definitely a, a, a creative moment as well. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tanya. Tanya. Hi, my name is Tanya. I am a general surgery resident at Stanford in addition to working at IDEO. I've been there for about a year. Um, and I got, had the pleasure of working with Annette in a great group, um, great mix of physicians, um, both on the medical and surgical side, a venture capitalist and a PhD student. So we really had a, a really diverse group. And I think for me, what makes the MedEx Challenge so special is like Giant said, we get to condense what we do every day over months into a day. But what you really do as you look around that room is you realize, especially as a physician, that you are not alone in working in healthcare and that there is a whole host of people all over that is trying to make things better. And that group includes really proactive patients. It includes people in the business world, people in the basic science world, people in the innovation world. As a physician, I'm incredibly thankful that IDEO spends so much time working on health-related problems because, quite frankly, we need help. And there are a lot of really great people working on that. And that becomes very apparent when you're sitting in a room that's that diverse and that's full of that many wise and confident personalities who are willing to work on those things. Um, and quite frankly, as a resident, it's nice to stop and take a breath and actually have a chance to listen to a patient for more than the five or 10 minutes that we're afforded. We don't get to do that very often, and it's not because we don't want to. It's a reality of the system that we work in, and so that's really a privilege to get to take the time and listen. And um, I think, Liza, you mentioned coming, sort of a, being a mirror for our humanity, but you have that moment when you're sitting there and you remember that as physicians, we want to take care of patients, and as patients, you want to be taken care of. And those two individuals are in the same room all the time, and yet somehow it's it's challenging to make people feel that they are being taken care of adequately. But really. We're set up to do that. People are all there for the right reasons, and this was a really great day in terms of trying to figure out how we facilitate that interaction being great again, rather than being mediocre or subpar. So I really appreciate all the insight that you guys brought to the day, and the att attendees at the conference were great, and we had a really good time. And um, the sex card is still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so it, in our, our closing bit here, we know that um, we learned that sometimes the story, the communication, is the prototype. Our team, uh, Doug's, Doug's team, centered around Doug, um, came together, and at one point, it, Dennis came over and said, I don't know what you all are doing. It looks like you've split up, but in fact, we had a script writing team that was hard at work. We had a production team. We need to acknowledge Brian, who put together this video. Uh, Doug was working on the graphic design and, the, and kind of managing the whole thing, and I was the administrative overhead doing nothing but add costs to the project. <laughs> and so I want to show this, and then Doug, maybe have you um, uh, give us a little bit of the, um, the pitch after we're done. Does that work? Today's approach to health leaves both patient and doctor frustrated. I spend a lot of time tracking the things that are important to me, and that impacts my health. It's so cool. I want to figure out what I need to do. <laughs> I think it's really important that we cover some of Doug's lab work today. His A1C level was a little high last time. His weight's a little up. We need to prioritize this during the limited time we have. Are we missing something here? In the visit, doctor. Blah, 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 blah. Without shared goals and shared thinking, these clinic visits go 
nowhere. 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 <laughs> what if the patient and doctor could share a dashboard? Both are standing and looking at the wall where the shared dashboard is projected. Here are a few things I want to cover. I've been working on my weight and keeping up with running. It's been a tough week because of a few big work projects are taking up all my time. I know we set a goal of figuring out ways to manage stress the last time we met. Can't say that's been easy. I know it can be hard. Uh, you know, related to that goal of stress, I have a great yoga teacher who offers mindfulness training. I could give you that information. Let's keep the goal of managing stress for this month. But let's also focus on your A1Cs. Could we agree on a strategy? Maybe if you keep up with your running, it will also help your glucose. That makes sense. I think I can do that. We call this approach overlap with doctor and patient sharing their goals. Now the time spent together during clinics goes smoothly. OK, I feel I have something to work on here. Look at my data as a team was more useful than I initially thought. Talking about my work stress was helpful. I, I feel like I was able to really help Doug today, and I, I feel like we're more connected. I'll send him a quick note in overlap to remind him of what we talked about. Overlap. Shared goals, more productive clinic visits, better health. As that wraps up here, uh, that video was produced in, the script was written, the graphics were done, that was recorded in the IDEO sound booth, AKA the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> that was done in an hour. Pretty amazing, right? And, and by the way, it's, it's overlap.net if you'd like to sign up. I've arranged for the uh, registrations just to go straight into Doug's email box. You're welcome. <laughs> we, we're over time, Doug. One, any last comments? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a, a great use of essentially trying to focus on both uh, having the patient and the doctor not be frustrated by these visits and not talking past each other. Instead, yeah. just focus on mm -hmm. the shared uh, goals. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.